we have great pleasure in welcoming you for this uh, workshop which is going to be little different from other uh, uh, lectures we call this as a workshop and not ecg lectures for a peculiar reasons which we'll be telling you later so today we will be covering two things only is the basics which is uh, which consists of four lectures and also about the qrs which consists of two lectures so our main purpose of conducting all these workshops throughout the state is to make it a point that ecg is no longer an investigation of a cardiologist ecg is an investigation like your blood sugar urea or cholesterol to be known to everybody irrespective of their specialty and the branch of medicine they are practicing so that's our mission and that's our aim that's why we keep on conducting these workshops in every nook and corner of the state any workshop cannot begin without paying tribute to this man do you know who who is this this is william einthoven who produced uh, the first human ecg in 1902 and got the nobel prize in 1924 so first of all you must know what is ecg ecg is nothing but a graphic display of the electrical activity of the heart as you know the heart is a pump the pump it pumps blood for this it needs an electricity this electricity is produced by the sinus node and it travels through a particular pathway to reach the appropriate place to make the heart to contract the ecg gives an idea about this electrical property of the heart the ecg tells you where this electrical impulse is produced how much is produced whether it is reaching the uh, whether it is traveling on the appropriate pathway at the correct speed whether it is reaching the appropriate place in correct time whether that appropriate place responds to the electricity correctly this is what the information you get from the electrocardiogram so it gives you idea about the electrical properties of the heart whereas when you do an echocardiography like this the echocardiography gives you mechanical properties of the heart how the heart is contracting and relaxing how the valves are moving how the valves are moving what is the chamber size enlargement valve obstructions and regurgitations that's why to say the heart is normal you have to demonstrate the ecg is normal as well as the echo is normal many times we feel why to have an echo when the ecg is normal and vice versa ecg gives you electrical property echo gives you mechanical property that's why both have to be normal to say the heart is normal so this is some history this is the first ecg machine devised by william einthoven which looks like a huge generator the poor assistant of william einthoven who has to immerse his uh, limbs in a huge pot of saline which served as an electrodes those days these are the electrodes today we know we have very sleek metal plates which serves as electrodes those that in those days in 1902 these are the electrodes this is part of saline in which the patient has to immerse his limbs it took two and half hours to record a ecg and took two and half days to interpret an ecg in 1902 nevertheless the first human ecg has got remarkable similarity to today's ecg same pqrst the ecg has not changed for more than 100 years and it is not going to lose its importance for the next 100 years that's why in spite of so much advances happening in cardiology ecg continued to remain as the basic very important investigation without which you cannot do further investigation and further treatment so people wondered why william einthoven started with the letter p when we start something we start with a or x y z a b c or x y z this fellow started with p so there are some postulations that his wife name started with p his father's name is p and so on william einthoven wanted to be different he wanted to start in the middle of the alphabet that is o he didn't want to join which begin with zero that's why he selected the next letter as p that's why the p q r s t came so this is the history of william einthoven starting uh, recording a uh, uh, human ecg with starting a uh, letter p so this is today's ecg machine so sleek so nice and it gives you ecg and interpretation within 2 seconds then you may wonder why should i travel all the way to iit and sit the whole day one and half days to learn ecg when my ecg machine gives me ecg and interpretation within 2 minutes 
or even two seconds. Many times this human ECG, this human brain is better than this ECG machine, the computer. So many times this computer gives you a wrong interpretation. That's why you must have a basic ECG knowledge to see your ECG machine is giving the correct values and interpretation. The ECG has got the greatest application when the patient comes to you with a chest pain. The first thing you do when the patient comes with an acute chest pain is an ECG. Because the ECG alone tells you whether the chest pain is cardiac or non-cardiac. In cardiac, it will tell you whether it is coronary or non-coronary. In coronary, it will tell you acute or chronic. In acute, it will tell you ST elevation situation or ST depression situation. Whether to give a thrombolytic therapy or to give a heparin or aspirin or do a primary PTCA. After doing all that, ECG alone tells you whether that particular modality of intervention has worked. And for the many years to come, ECG alone will tell you whether the disease is progressing or regressing. So no other investigation when the patient has got chest pain, right from the onset of diagnosis, for many years of patient's life, it is ECG which tells you what's happening to the patient. So when the patient comes to acute chest pain and the ECG shows a huge ST elevation like this, you know you have to either thrombolyze within 30 minutes or do a primary PTCA within 90 minutes. No other investigation at this point in time is going to tell you that. Not the echo, not the angiogram. It is the ECG which is going to tell you what to do the next minute when the patient comes to an acute chest pain. That's why I tell you, even if you do a coronary angiogram and put a one and a half lakhs worth stent inside your coronary artery, ECG alone tells you whether the stent is working or not. So in spite of so many advances are happening, so many treatments are happening in cardiology, it is a basic ECG still remains the gold standard for diagnosis and management. So before we go into the details of the ECG, this is a very important principle you must understand. The ECG should not be interpreted with, without a basic clinical picture. For that matter, any, any investigation should not be interpreted without the basic clinical knowledge. You are here to become a very good electrocardiographers. That's why you are here. But without being a good clinician, basically, you can never be a good electrocardiographer. So the ECG should be interpreted only with the basic is clinical knowledge of the patient's history, age, sex, and so on. So why the ECG is different? Why the ECG is difficult? ECG is different and difficult. It is because for all the other investigations, if you memorize a particular picture, you will diagnose the same thing for many years and for many pictures to come. For example, you have a brain hemorrhage or a cerebral hemorrhage or a cerebral infarct. Once you see a cerebral infarct, for many years to come, you know that is the cerebral infarct looks same in for many patients or for many years it is going to be the same. Whereas the ECG for the same change, for example, you have a T-wave inversion. The T-wave inversion in young has got a different diagnosis. In adult, it may have a different diagnosis. In the old, it may have a different diagnosis. So that is why the same ECG change may have different diagnosis. Although the change is same, the diagnosis is different according to the patient's age and so on. So that is why the ECG is different. It is not like any other investigation where you have to memorize certain characteristic clinical pictures and then make a diagnosis. 